Okay, in a previous video, I showed you how to set up a project in Transit Next and how to import external resources for use with that project. Now we'll continue from here and I'll show you how to actually translate the documents that we included in our project using the resources that we imported into the project. So first I'll tell you a little bit about the interface of Transit Next. At the top we have a ribbon like in Microsoft Office. So we have various tabs, project, statistics, edit, processing and so on. And under each tab we have icons and functions that relate to the tab in question. So for instance everything related to project and uh, everything related to matches, to terminology and so on. Like in Microsoft Office, the ribbon can be minimized. So I will do this. This will give us more real estate for working inside transit. Next we have uh, the actual editor which is on the left hand side and takes most of the real estate inside the program. And the layout of the editor, as I mentioned in the previous video, has a horizontal layout. So you have uh, source segments on top and target segments on bottom. So this is a bit different from most other translation environments like uh, MemoQ or WordPress Pro or Deja Vu and so on. Where the layout is vertical, you have uh, source segments on the left hand side column and uh, target segments on the right hand side. Here it's uh, horizontal like in the old version of Trados or so like in WordFast Classic. On the right hand side uh, there is a, a pane for terminology. So if we have uh, for instance the focus on segment number 8 which contains two highlighted words. These words belong to a dictionary in uh, Termstar and they show up in the terminology pane and they are identified by a letter. For, so the first term Pina press 2 is identified by the letter A and the second term Alotus Valico start menu is identified by the letter B. Next we have the markup pane. The markup pane will be used for instance for the last segment of our document which contains some a portion of text which is in italic and which is enclosed between two small codes and uh, these are markups and they show up in the markup pane. I will show you later on how to use this uh, markup information. Then we also have a PDF viewer here which is which can be collapsed. This viewer is a representation of our source document and we have a red arrow that tells us where we stand inside the document. So for instance if I move to segment number 10 and I use the PDF viewer then the red arrow will tell me where I am inside the document. So that provides some context information that can be useful sometimes. So let's move to the beginning of the document. Nine passet alcun. I have to translate this into English. So first I'll select the source text that was duplicated to the target segment and I'll delete it and then I'll enter my own translation which is getting started. By default, Transit populates the target segments with the source text, but we can modify this default if we don't like it. Now I'll move to the processing tab and this is where I have the function for confirming the segment, this uh, green check mark. Of course, I don't intend to use the mouse for confirming every single segment, so there is a shortcut for that. Unfortunately, it's not very intuitive, so it's not mentioned in the interface here. I, I don't see what is the shortcut for this uh, function. But I checked in the manual and I know that it's Alt Insert. So each time I want to confirm a segment and move to the next one, I will press Alt Insert. So I will do it now. And now I'm in the second segment and again I'll select the text inside this target segment and I'll delete it uh, in order to have a clean empty segment and to be able to enter my translation. So I'll enter my translation which is buttons and menus. 
and I will confirm it with Alt Insert, except that this time I'll go back to Processing and here under the drop down menu I'll select this option Empty Next Segment. So each time I'm going to confirm a segment, this will automatically empty the next segment. So I find this is more convenient. By the way, my terminology contained, if I move to the dictionary tab, I had such terms as pineke, which is button, and valico, which is menu. Unfortunately, I had the same terms in the second segment, but they were in uh, plural in the plural form. So nominative plural, pineket, and valicot, nominative plural of valico. And they were different enough for transit not to recognize them. So this is why I had to enter my translation without being able to take advantage of the terminology. So I'll confirm my segment with Alt Insert. And now the third segment is empty and I can enter my translation like this. And I'll quickly confirm it, Alt Insert. And now I have in the segment I need to translate, so segment numbered as number eight. In fact, it's only number four, but transit has a strange way of numbering segments, which is not what you see in the editor. So segment number eight, according to transit, there are two terms that were recognized, Paina and Alotus Valikon. Paina is press to English, that's identified as term A. And Alotus Valico, the nominative form, is identified, start menu in English, is identified as the letter B. The shortcut in transit for copying terminology is Alt G followed by the letter that identifies the term. So if I want to copy the first one, I'll press Alt G and then the letter A. And that copies press to. Then I'll enter my translation access the, and I need to enter start menu, which is my term B, so Alt G and B. So this is not particularly quick compared to other CAT tools where you can use, uh, for instance, auto-suggest or, or uh, other convenient predictive typing to insert your recognized terminology. Here you have to use actually three keys before you are able to insert each term. So I'll confirm this segment, Alt Insert, and uh, this is my fifth segment, so I'll quickly enter it. Oh, the first term is uh, Alt G and A, that gives me press 2, and then I'll follow increase the value or move up in the menu. I'll quickly confirm this, Alt Insert. And here, for segment number 12, it's actually the same segment, the same content as segment number 8. Pina here to access the Lotus Valley code, press to access the start menu. So it shows up as a 100% match, as expected. It's not populated automatically, so uh, propagation, auto-propagation is not a feature which is uh, enabled by default in uh, transit. Uh, but it's here, and uh, I can copy this segment either by right-clicking and then selecting Accept Translation, or there is a more convenient way, which is a keyboard shortcut. And again, this keyboard shortcut is not mentioned anywhere in the interface, so you have to know it. And it's Alt-Enter. So if I press Alt-Enter now, that will copy the 100% match that we have for this segment. Now I'll move to the next segment, Alt Insert. Here I have um, uh, again press 2, uh, Pina press 2, so that's a term identified by the letter A, so I can press Alt G A and I can continue, activate the, and now I can use the reference material that I have. So I know that Tao Stavalo is a technical term that uh, most likely will be found in the reference material that I imported from the TMX. So for that purpose, I can select it, I can highlight it in the source segment. I can go to the matches tab and here there is a, 
a search uh, function, which is concordant search, what Transit calls dual concordant search. And again, there is a shortcut for it, but it's not mentioned in the interface. Uh, it's Alt Enter again. So I'll select it with the mouse here. And in this pop-up window, Transit displays 11 matches, 11 translation units that contain the word that I'm interested in, so Tau Stavalo. I can see that uh, actually Tau Stavalo in English is backlight. So I'll select that. There is no specific command for sending the highlighted uh, word to the segment I'm translating. So I have to use the standard Ctrl C, Ctrl V uh, shortcut uh, combination. So I'll press Ctrl C and I'll move to my segment here and Ctrl V and that will copy the term I'm interested in. I could, by the way, add this uh, term pair. So if I uh, select Tau Stavalo and then backlight here, and I want to add that in my dictionary, I can go to terminology. And here I have a rapid entry, uh, which will allow me to send this term pair on, on the fly to the dictionary that I have selected. Save. And now my new term pair Tau Stavalo backlight is found in the dictionary. So each time I will encounter Tau Stavalo, this will be suggested as a dictionary term backlight in the terminology pane. So I can confirm this segment, Alt Insert. Here I have a fuzzy match, 71% fuzzy match, because I have a very similar segment. Instead of surenta accessi increase, I, I have pienenta accessi, which is decrease. And instead of ulospan, which is up, I have alaspan, which is down. So again, I can use this fuzzy match. I can copy it with Alt Enter and I can make the changes that are necessary. So that will be decrease here. And instead of move up, that will be move down. Now I can Quickly confirm, Alt Insert. Pida Painetuna, I can see that it's uh, recognized as a dictionary term that keep pressed to. So Alt G A, that will copy it. Then I'll enter the following part of the translation, access shortcut, and then C. This is uh, the place where I should add this markup information. And for that, this is identified by the number one. So I can press Control one, nothing happens. But when I start typing in, the codes will be automatically added. So I can type my translations here, shortcuts. I can move to the end and I can close the parenthesis and I have my translation ready. So this is how you can use the markup information in the markup pane. I will confirm this segment with Alt Insert. And now my entire document has been translated. So what I can do, I can move to the Project tab. And here I have Export. So I will save first and I will export. So my target language is English. I only have one. Start uh, Export. It's successful, okay, and close. Now, if I go to my project folder, Suunto, and I go to the export uh, folder that was created by Transit at the beginning of the project, and then ENG for English, this should be the translated version of my document, so I can quickly open it. And indeed, it looks like it has been translated, okay. Everything, including images and formatting, is found in this document. So this is how to complete a translation in Transit Next using terminology imported from an Excel file and using reference material imported from a TMX translation memory. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.